Welcome to Culture Wire, a program that focuses on the arts and culture scene in San Francisco. I'm your host, Meg Schiffler. We're at the Arts Commission Gallery where the show Trace Elements will be on view until July 2nd. On this episode of Culture Wire, we'll meet some of San Francisco's youngest artists, a drumming and dance core from the Mission, and a writer's core from all over the city. Just watch. Scientist Tyron Vibra Sinus, Honest is Minus, the Minus Times, if by nine times or whatever, your best rhyme is honest, my time is 09. 2010, I'm gonna do it again. For 31 years, San Francisco's annual Carnival celebration in the Mission District has brought communities together to experience the best of Latin American and Caribbean cultures and traditions with a diverse array of food, music, and art. The groups that participate in the parade are friends and neighbors that spend time together all year long perfecting their dances and practicing their drumming. The San Francisco Arts Commission supports one of those groups at the Mission District's Columbia Park Boys and Girls Club through a community arts and education program in the community's grant. Loco Bloco meets after school at the Boys and Girls Club to teach percussion to children aged 6 through 18. Since its founding in 1994, over 6,000 students have participated in Loco Bloco. Bloco is a Portuguese word that describes a gathering of traditional street bands and groups around Carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. In the weeks preceding Carnival, neighbors rehearse their music out in the streets. The percussionists are known as the bataria, and along with the dancers and stilt walkers, they help keep the party going. The Director of Cultural Affairs for the San Francisco Arts Commission, Louise Cancel, attended a rehearsal at the Columbia Boys and Girls Club to learn more about Loco Bloco. Thirty-one years ago, artists and residents of San Francisco wanted to bring the spirit and culture of Latin America and the Caribbean to the city. They started an annual tradition called Carnaval. This past May 24th, Carnaval was celebrated in the Mission, and one of the key groups that participated is a group called Loco Bloco. With me today is Pablo Palomino, the director of the Columbia Park Boys and Girls Club that actually houses Loco Bloco in their community center. How are you doing, Pablo? Hola, Luis, how are you? Good. So tell me a little bit about this relationship, this partnership between Columbia Park and Loco Bloco. Sure. Um, Columbia Park and Loco Bloco have been partnering together for now over five years. Um, this partnership started as an opportunity for the clubhouse to get it, uh, be able to provide performing arts services to the members that we have here in our clubhouse. And Loco Bloco was looking for a space to be able to do those services. Since then, we've been, able, we've been offering a variety of performing arts programs here through Loco Bloco. Uh, with local Bloco being the, the vehicle to, to provide those services um, from drumming to dance to um, other forms of performing arts. Now I know for Columbia Park this is a uh, one of the grants that uh, you know t that you get from the Arts Commission. Mm -hmm. So how significant has that grant been in able, in able to uh, in order for you to be able to do this uh, collaboration? I think it's been uh, incredibly significant. I mean, it basically assures that we have um, high quality staff that are perform, you know, you know, performing at their highest um, level of performance. And it also assists uh, you know, the organization in terms of having to deal with some of the logistical issues such as utilities and you know, maintenance, et cetera. But more than anything, I think the, 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 big, the, the most important thing is the fact that we're able to provide um, high quality staff that can provide their skills and their talents to the, to the youth that we have in our, in our building. Could you talk a little bit about the importance of this collaboration uh, between uh, Columbia Park and Local Bloco? We consider Local Bloco to be one of our cornerstone partnerships here at Columbia Park, um, and we only see this relationship going, um, getting larger and stronger. You know, we hope to build on this relationship. So um, we, you know, we're constantly trying to figure out new ways of trying to. Uh, 
provide new services and also um, be more accessible for the, for the local block organization to utilize our resources here. Local Bloco is, um, start, is based on samba music from Brazil, so that's kind of like where it started from, but also we teach like fusion, other African, hip hop, other Caribbean styles. So it's actually, when we saw that performance last Sunday, or you know, in, uh, a couple of Sundays ago at, at, uh, at Carnival, um, what was the range of music and perform, you know, dances that were, that, that, that were performed? So, yeah, so one thing Local Bloco takes pride on is doing multicultural stuff. So we did Brazilian samba, we did samba hege, we did sukus, which is from Central Africa, and we did uh, hip hop maracatu, which is like Brazilian hip hop and some hip hop, regular hip hop. Yeah. And so there's all this preparation that takes place leading up to carnival, right? And so do you, are there various different instructors that teach these different uh, musical forms? Yeah, so what Carnival is, is coming together of all the different classes um, that Local Bloco teaches throughout the community in the Bayview, in the Visitation Valley, here at Columbia Park in the Mission. And so there's stilting, there's dance, there's drumming, there's art. And so all that comes together in Carnival. So like all the classes that, you know, kids are taking all throughout the teens, the little kids, um, first through fifth grade. Everybody comes to extra rehearsals Saturday just for Carnival in addition to their regular weekly classes. So that, you know, the weekly classes build skill and Carnival is just more of like a rehearsal presentation showcase of all the things that we've been teaching throughout the year. Now the percussion part of the group, uh, what they call the bateria, mm -hmm. uh, how many people are in that? The bateria can range anywhere from 10, so that's a small performance group, but in Carnival, we have we can have up to 50 drummers. Now, what can you talk to me a little bit about the kind of spirit of camaraderie that uh, participating in local bloco helps to generate? So, local bloco has you know always been a family community thing. Like you're always you know meeting new people and just everybody's involved. Like all the family members are involved. You know, are volunteers, and so. Definitely a family atmosphere is something that Local Bloco generates. You know, like non judgmental um, building of skill and creative expression. So that's something that we, you know, we take pride on. That's something that, you know, we all work on as youth that grew up in the organization and also as mentors to youth that are coming up. And you have many of the participants have, have been in Local Bloco and have participated in Carnival a couple of times, mm -hmm. right? So. How, does, how has their participation evolved over time? How, how? So yeah, so it starts from what we call poco loco, or actually bloquitos, which are the little mini, you know, like um, uh, under five year olds. And then you go into, you transition into poco loco, which is about first to fifth grade. And then from middle school, we have the teen ensemble. So that, that focuses on the progression and skill. So, you know, by the time you are in the teen ensemble, it's focused on performances. So these are the teens, they're organizing their own events. They're going out into, you know, street actions, um, you know, community events and performing. And then from there, leaders and teachers. So, you know, a lot of the kids who are in Loco Bloco were, grew up in Loco Bloco and are now teaching classes and are now organizing it. I started when I was 13. Um, Local Bloco was doing a program here during the summer and the way that I got in like on the last day of their class there was this girl who I wanted to impress so I started drumming. And so you entered the percussion part of Local Bloco? I'm, right now there's five instructors and I'm the only one that has four classes, two in the Mission and two in the Bayview um, drumming. Having been part of Local Bloco from the you know from a very early age, does that give you a special connection to the students? Um, I think it gives me a special connection to the students because I've been Local Bloco for so long, and because I'm a former Boys and Girls Club member. They know me from my teen years here, so that's that that's an easier way for me to attract the kids. And this past carnival, what was the what was the experience like for you and, and for the kids that, that participated? The kids liked it a lot. Um, this year they were really into it music wise. I had this is the first year that we had most of our poco kids drum, which is a good thing. 
My kids from the Bayview were shy because they haven't came to any of the carnival practices. So I, I introduced them to my kids from the mission and they interacted very well and they both had a blast doing, doing carnival. Well, thank you, Antoine, for participating and giving us an idea about how Local Bloco has really helped to shape the lives of more than 6,000 kids since the program started. And this is one of those great success stories of the programs in the community that are funded by the San Francisco Arts Commission. Local Bloco offers classes four days a week at six locations around San Francisco. You can find the complete class schedule and register your bloquito at locobloco.org classes. In 1994, San Francisco was one of three cities selected to launch a national service program for artists to serve local communities' needs. Celebrating its 15th anniversary, Writers' Corps has helped 15,000 students discover their inner voice and improve their reading and writing skills through poetry. Through its creative writing education programs, which are taught by published poets, fiction writers, and performers, Writers' Corps provides forums for youth to be heard. The program is part of the Arts Commission's Community Arts and Education Program. Currently, Writers' Corps offers in-school and after-school programs for youth between 12 and 21 at six locations in San Francisco and at the Juvenile Probation Facility in La Honda. Every year, the students' work is published in books and CDs and presented at an evening of readings on stage at the main San Francisco Public Library. SFG TV's cameras recorded the complete event for an episode of the series Main Stage and talked to some of these remarkable young poets of the 2009 Writers' Corps Literary Festival. Poems are diaries. Poems are made to go hard or go home. Poems are made to influence. Poems are made to touch lives. Poems catch lives. Poems are alive. Poetry is a world where you can like make whatever you want happen. I saw my mom write a lot of poems and it seemed fun when I was young. When I saw a flyer in a small library near my house. They have this really interesting description of it. I'm just like, wow, I love writing. Like I should totally do this. I was only surprised about like the age group. I was expecting like people more around my age. Dear President Obama, I hope you can change all the problems that the world faces, such as the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, the war between Israel and Palestine, and most importantly, global warming. Kids are really like smart. They have a really like broader imagination, sort of. I mean, it kind of seems like common sense, but I just didn't expect them to be as good writers as they turned out to be. I don't want toys anymore, and I don't want to show my baby pictures. And if I'm crazy and loud, then you're insane and rude. And if today is not our day, so be it. There's always tomorrow. Thank you. It feels good, actually. It feels good, you know, getting my work out there. So it feels really nice, you know, have my voice heard. When I first joined Writers' Corps, I was kind of shy. I mean, I, I still get a little nervous sometimes. Fluorescent red, under the bright lights, thoughts racing underneath. Head to the ground, focus on her hands, chipped blue nail polish. Like everyone was so supportive and like encouraging and it just really helped, you know? Okay, this is, <laughs> this is a poem to my mom. F you, F you, he sits and laughs. My mother's overworked, tired, but still solid body stood hard as a rock. I'm not going to cry, she demands to herself, as an aggravated, pissed off tear falls down from her hot face. Don't cry, Mom, don't cry. You get a lot more attention than you know a typical high school student would get with a you know normal teacher. They just make me like I must write for them. Man, the teachers are really good. They're really supportive. Um, Janet and Heller and Chad Sweeney, they always have my back. I met Michelle Matz, and she was a writing score teacher, and she introduced me to Kathy Jean, and I took her from there.
under her wings. It was last night that I was thinking how good my professor has been to me. She has given me support without even using heartwarming words. When I'm struggling, she holds my hand, letting me know that I can count on her. I do write because I don't want to keep holding my memories in that things. And uh, once letting them go, whatever you, you do, you tell them, you tell to somebody else or you just write them, they just go away. They stay, but they go away. They don't, they don't hurt you anymore. My mom stayed up while I slept on the couch at ABC No Rio. I caught fleas from cookie puss sleeping on my stomach, keeping us both warm. At that age, I lost the comfort from lies, like a fly sleeping in the mouth of a corpse, stranded on a crescent moon with no oars, floating in a sea of ash littered with diamonds. I swallow past lives to spit these alternate futures. I just like to try to talk to real people, and so I just like, as long as I'm happy with it, really. Mostly it's just wordplay, but like whatever feeling I have behind it, I have to, um, I have to make sure that's reality. Whenever I travel around the city, I always have so many different memories of it or just different experiences stick out to my mind and I like to write about ordinary things that happen to me. A window bird trills by my bed. Power lines crisscross streets like threads in the sky. A book of lives is a month of Saturdays. A seahorse from Peru. Perfume at my neck. All the threads in my body connect, the heart beats. In the beginning, I was really, really shy, and I think it's given me a lot more confidence. It really enables me to like reflect on like something that's happened or will happen, or just like let my imagination flow. Uh, believe it or not, it actually helps me relieve stress, like from the normal high school things. After you make it and like you give it to people and you get feedback and you like. I don't know, they like give you a little bit of confidence, you start to believe in yourself, and that makes your poetry better. To learn more about how you can get involved with Writers' Corps as either a teacher or a student, visit writerscorps.org. And don't miss your chance to see these young poets live by checking out the events section of the website. To watch the entire 15th annual literary festival, visit youtube.com slash artscommission. Here at the Arts Commission Gallery, the exhibition Trace Elements features newly commissioned works by over a dozen Bay Area artists. The artists in the exhibition were asked to think about human interaction with the urban environment and the traces that people leave behind. Deaf Peace Sun's illustrated map of San Francisco cites real locations of forgotten cemeteries and controversial burial grounds. The fictional San Francisco Fog Factory is the focus of Porus Walker's alternative history of San Francisco. Michelle Blade's installation provides an opportunity to step into your own sunset. And the Hamburgerized Photo Club takes a look below the shiny veneer of San Francisco to reveal a hidden and somewhat darker side of our city. These works and others can be viewed at the Arts Commission Gallery at 401 Van Ness Avenue and our window installation site at 155 Grove Street until July 2nd. The gallery is open Wednesday through Saturday from noon until 5 p.m. Admission is always free, so please stop by before there is no trace left of this exhibition. The Arts Commission Gallery's Art at City Hall program is presenting Bill Fontana's spectacular sound installation, Spiraling Echoes. It can be heard weekdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. throughout City Hall's Grand Rotunda and Upper Walkways. This unique sound experience will remain in City Hall until August 14th. The Arts Commission is a proud sponsor of the Summer and the Symphony program, which kicks off its month-long concert series on June 25th with Pink Martini. And don't miss the symphony's free concert in Dolores Park on July 19th. To learn more about this summer's exciting concerts, visit sfsymphony.org forward slash summer. Also, 
be sure to catch Fly Away Productions' The Ballad of Polly Ann, which celebrates, through aerial dance, the women who built the Bay Area's bridges. Performances are Tuesday through Saturday, July 14th through 18th, and the 21st through the 25th at 8 p.m. at Somart's Cultural Center. Culture Wire is going on summer vacation soon. Try not to miss us too much because we'll be back in the fall with coverage of the third annual Mayor's Art Award and the unveiling of Maya Lin's second installation for the California Academy of Sciences. Until then, announcements of new events will continue to be added to SFGTV's community message board. And you can always visit us at the Arts Commission's website for the latest news. Want to tell us what you'd like to see on future shows? Do you have an event you want to promote? Email us at this address, culturewire at sfgov.org. Thanks for watching Culture Wire on SFGTV. See you in the fall.